Well, being a teacher, um, being a teacher, what I found out pretty early on was that it wasn't about teaching stuff. It wasn't about teaching content. It wasn't about social studies or mathematics, English. It was, it was about connecting with people. And that made all the difference. When I figured that out, it meant that my job wasn't to teach the stuff, it was to connect with people, to make a difference, to touch their lives. And the, and the sneakiest thing happened. I was touching their lives when I could, but they were almost always touching mine and helping inspire me and reinvent myself. So it's a really selfish act. It was one of those things that uh, didn't come to me early in my, in my profession. It came to me after thinking about it for a while, and it really made all the difference. I think I figured it out the first time when I, uh, that, that it had this, this longer term, this longer range of effect. When I had the, uh, the daughter of someone I had taught came and said, you know, my mom said I should take a class from you. And I not only saw her mom in her, I saw the same spark of intellect behind her eyes. And it was really exciting. Some of the other things I really love about teaching is that, that you get to reinvent yourself all the time. Think about it. What other profession is there where every September you start over? So it doesn't matter if you had a lousy year, really had a tough time of it or if you had a wonderful year and it couldn't be better, come September, you're starting all over again. And that act of refreshing and reinventing yourself is a really, really wonderful thing. And teaching sneaky that way, the longer you do it, um, the, the more you fear giving it up. It gets into your blood and you will not ever want to stop. Okay. Um, I, Tied to that is probably the greatest secret of teaching, and that is that uh, um, you never grow old. There's a reason for it. it. Took me a while to come to this, but you don't grow old because every year, because you're looking at a refreshed student population that's the same age largely. Okay, so every year you they come to you a certain age, they leave a certain age, and then they're refreshed with a whole nother group that's the same age. <laughs> and so you're looking through eyes at a group that never changes, so consequently you never see yourself change. So you never it's really this secret of eternal youth <laughs> of teaching because because the group you work with never changes, so you don't have to either. Well, one of the biggest challenges people seem to face is the perception that they're going to have to take a vow of poverty in order to go into a career in teaching. It's not true. They will earn a good living, they'll get along fine. But it concerns me that that's such a deep concern and it's one that I hear all the time from, from prospective teachers. Usually I have a pretty glib answer for them. If they're going into it for the money, they're in the wrong place, and they should look for something else to do. But really, um, in the long run, they will earn a good living. But more importantly, what they're going to do is have the kind of a job where they not only earn a living, but they'll have a life worth living. They really will be contributing in unique ways. There's lighter advice we give too. One of my favorite nuggets is to tell students to take a one of the challenges they'll face is what to do if a disaster happens in, in the classroom. And so I always tell them to take a fresh set of clothes on the first day of school, stick it in the, their desk, and leave it there. Forget about it. They won't have to remember it until the certainty of some student walking up to them and throwing up on them happens. And it will happen. It happens to everybody. And it doesn't matter whether they're kindergartners or grade 12s or university students. One time in their career, that's going to happen. They'll be grateful to have that set of clothes to go to and to be able to refresh themselves that way. But more seriously, what, what a lot of our students are worried about is that they're dealing with an entire community of problems. And those are very real challenges. They think that when they go into teaching that they're going to be teaching a subject matter or even just teaching kids. But what they realize pretty quickly is that they're ingrained in a community. They're working with parents. They're working with administrators. They're working with health professionals. They're working 
sometimes even with corrections officers. They're doing all kinds of things. Teachers who go into the profession can't believe that one day they may be posting bail for one of their students. And all of those things are very real and important parts of, of being a teacher and their challenges. And they, they're very concerned about what to do about those challenges. I think they have to trust themselves. They have to trust their training, the, the kind of education that they get. But then also they have to trust themselves to, to grow into a position, to take time with it, to grow from the experience, keep the right kinds of attitudes, work with, with, with people in the community, and they'll do just fine. One of the opportunities that's available is obvious, I suppose, to, uh, to most people is that, that you'll always have a job uh, in the K-12 system. Teaching kindergarten through grade 12, that's always available. What people don't realize is that in most provinces, you're going to be certified to teach K through 12. So there's a tremendous amount of lat latitude of movement within even that confined area of teaching. So you might be teaching uh, junior high social studies for a while, and then later you might be teaching grade three, and then you might be teaching you know, somewhere else in high school later. So in dif at different parts of your career, you might specialize and teach in you know, special education. You could do all kinds of different things, even within the school system. Could even become a guidance counselor or move in those areas. There are also kinds, uh, lots of opportunities in educational leadership to, um, um, to become a vice principal or a principal or a department head in a school. There are also things completely outside the K-12 system. Many of the students who come to me for a master's program are really expatriates from the K-12 system. They're looking for a new way to express themselves as educators in their lives professionally. And so there are opportunities for them in training and development, in corporations, in government, in the post-secondary sector, all kinds of things that they perhaps haven't thought of. Well, teaching touches almost every other area of endeavor. People love to hire teachers to do all kinds of things because they're smart, they're self-disciplined, and they've been running their own small businesses for years.